Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Norma Thornton? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing you by this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the alleged crime, and offer my analysis. At the time making this video, Norma Thornton is 78 years old. She had a rough time when she was younger. For example, she experienced poverty. As an adult, she spent six months living in a school bus with her five children after her first husband died. She was only able to get by due to the generosity of others, which gave her a special appreciation for the significance of charity. For almost 20 years, Norma owned and operated a diner while raising her family in Alaska. In 2017, Norma moved to Bullhead City, Arizona after retiring. This city is in western Arizona, right on the border with Nevada. It's about two hours south of Las Vegas. Norma encountered homeless people and others who were struggling to meet their needs. Of the 41,000 people who live in Bullhead City, about 7,300 live below the poverty line. Starting in 2018, Norma prepared home-cooked food and took it to Bullhead City Community Park, which was near her house. Norma supplied the food to anyone who asked. She would do this frequently. At one point, she was feeding the hungry seven days a week. Many of the people who took advantage of her generous offer were homeless. Norma served an average of 30 people per day. Norma always included protein as well as fruits and vegetables in her meal. She wanted the meal to be not only healthy, but also to taste good. She even supplied the people with utensils and plates. The park was a convenient location for this activity for several reasons. It was less than a mile from where many homeless people slept. People eating could sit at tables in the shade, which is particularly important in Arizona. They could use public bathrooms, and it is where many people in need would spend their days anyway. So they would sleep in the desert nearby and then come to the park in a day. The closest alternate source of food was several miles away, like a food pantry or a shelter, too far for many people to walk. Norma invested a lot of time and energy in this endeavor. Just at the park, she would spend two hours setting up, serving the meals, and cleaning the area. Norma said that when she left the park, it was always as clean, if not cleaner, than when she arrived. Norma wanted to help people to survive, and she hoped that they could turn their lives around. In addition, she wanted to inspire others in the community to action. Norma was successful in this regard, but not in the way that she expected. On February 16, 2021, the city council enacted an ordinance that greatly restricted sharing food in public parks. The ordinance required a permit for anyone sharing prepared food in any park if done for, quote, charitable purposes at no cost or for a nominal charge, unquote. Sealed prepackaged foods were not covered under this ordinance, only prepared food. A person can receive prepared food from a charitable source and then bring it to the park and eat it. They just cannot receive it in the park. Even with the permit, food may only be shared in a public park for charitable purposes for no more than one two-hour window one time per month. If one person shared food in any given month, no one else could share food during that month. Only one event per month was permitted in each park. In addition, a permit holder could only hold one event per month regardless of location. So one person could not go around and share food at multiple parks in one month. There were several requirements to get a permit. Advance notice of at least five days was required. In addition to the permit fee, the applicant was required to submit a refundable deposit of $250. This would cover maintenance and cleaning costs. If the city spent more than that, the applicant would have to pay for it, even if it was in excess of $250. An applicant would also have to provide proof of general liability insurance with $1 million of coverage. The City Council made it clear that if the food was shared for some reason other than charitable purposes, they had no problem with that. For example, 
If somebody wanted to feed guests at a birthday party in a public park, that was permitted. Now moving to the timeline of the alleged crime. On March 8, 2022, Norma had shared food with about 20 people in the park. As she was loading her car, she was approached by two Bullhead City police officers and confronted about sharing food. On body cam video, one officer can be heard saying that he was going to call his higher-ups to figure out how to handle the situation. He can then be seen in his police vehicle, presumably contacting some type of supervisor. He told the supervisor that he made contact with Norma, and she told him that she was just bringing the transients some food. The supervisor then asked to be removed from speakerphone. Evidently, the police officer was then ordered to place Norma under arrest for violating the city ordinance. The officer told the supervisor that he thought this was a public relations nightmare, but he proceeded to approach Norma and advise her that she was under arrest. The police officer walked Norma over to his police pickup truck and told her that he was supposed to handcuff her, but he was not going to do that because he didn't think that she was a hardened criminal. He didn't think that she was out to hurt him. Norma climbed in the back of the truck as she told him she's not out to hurt anybody. Norma was given a citation. She was reminded that this was still technically an arrest and advised that if she returned to the park, she would spend at least one night in jail. The officer indicated that she was lucky this time, according to a lawsuit that Norma filed later. About one month later, Norma went to court. She was advised that she was charged with a Class II misdemeanor. She could go to jail for up to four months and be fined up to $750. The city prosecutor offered Norma a plea deal. She would have to perform community service, I guess something like feeding homeless people, and serve two years of probation. Norma did not feel as though she was guilty of any crime. Therefore, she rejected the offer. Hearings were scheduled in anticipation of a trial, but before any hearings occurred, the city prosecutor dismissed the charge with prejudice, meaning it could never be refiled. The prosecutor said that Norma was unfamiliar with the new law. Norma was warned that this defense would no longer be available to her if she returned to the park and served prepared food. Norma started feeding people in a private alley next to a jet ski shop in order to avoid going to jail. It is nice of the jet ski business to allow her to use that space, but clearly this is not the most convenient location for what she's doing. The demand for jet skis by homeless people is somewhat limited right now, so it's not a place they would normally frequent. Only about half as many people show up to the alley for Norma's food. Norma is represented by an attorney and has filed a lawsuit against the city. The lawsuit says that banning Norma from engaging in charitable acts is a violation of her constitutional rights to due process guaranteed under the 14th Amendment. In addition, the lawsuit argues that sharing food for charitable purposes has been disallowed, but the city allows sharing food for non-charitable purposes. This disparate treatment violates the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. Norma is seeking a permanent injunction prohibiting the city from enforcing the ordinance, attorney's fees, and $1 in nominal charges for each and every violation of her constitutional rights. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. The city government has essentially tried to make the argument that they are trying to protect the homeless with the ordinance prohibiting the sharing of prepared food in public parks. They feel as though feeding the homeless under certain conditions may enable them. They would rather the homeless walk a longer distance to the homeless shelters than a shorter distance to the park. The city council was also concerned about litter in the parks, yet they did not ban prepackaged foods. Perhaps they forgot that people open packages and discard them. It doesn't seem like the city council members were really thinking things through. Regardless of what the council members claim regarding their intent, it's clear that they were specifically targeting people like Norma. This ordinance was like a cruise missile programmed with her coordinates. The city council believed that enforcement of the ordinance on sharing food would help clear out the homeless encampments. They had received several complaints from people trying to use the parks. Item number two, the city council spent quite a bit of time 
working on this ordinance. The police spent nine months going to the public parks and warning people about the ordinance without making any arrests. Instead of wasting resources, they could have simply helped Norma or designated an area of the parks that she could use. There was no need to become heavy-handed to address this issue. Criminalizing charity makes no sense whatsoever. Hiding homeless people will not solve the problem of homelessness. Penalizing people for trying to help the homeless will not solve it either. Item number three, some people have argued that the city council had the right to pass the ordinance. They were simply trying to keep the parks in a condition consistent with what the public wanted. The due process clause protects people from arbitrary, irrational, or unreasonable regulations. This ordinance appears to violate this clause. However, I think the ordinance also runs into a problem because it created a double standard. The city council was fine with people eating prepared food in a public park, just not homeless people. So if a person generally has enough to eat, they can eat in the park. But if they are hungry and poor, no food can be served to them. I was wondering what would happen if Norma invited all the homeless people to a birthday party. Is that a loophole in this ordinance? It worries me that any group of elected officials could be this obtuse. Which brings me to item number four. At some point, the city council and the police had to be aware that this ordinance would lead to an arrest. How could they not recognize the optics of their behavior? The police officer who arrested Norma recognized the impending public relations nightmare. The city could not have looked any more ridiculous if they had charged Norma with other offenses like manufacturing and distributing pork and beans, conspiracy to counterfeit chicken salad, and possession of a sawed-off hot dog in the commission of a charity. Another confusing element is this. What was the city prosecutor trying to accomplish in this case? He offered Norma community service. How does this make sense? She was being prosecuted for providing community service, and the penalty is community service? So she can't feed the homeless, but if she gets into trouble doing that, then she must feed the homeless. Even if the city prosecutor believed that Norma was wrong, is that really going to teach her a lesson? Also, Norma would have been on probation under the plea agreement. How does that work? I could picture probation officers visiting Norma's house and saying to her, I smell something cooking. Are you trying to feed the homeless again? That's it. You're going to jail. Now moving to my final thoughts. This case should embarrass the city council and the police in Bullhead City. In the eyes of the public, there are some fights that elected officials and police officers just can't win and still retain any semblance of dignity. Arresting an elderly grandmother for feeding the homeless is one of those fights. Those are my thoughts in the case of Norma Thornton. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.